If you're a chief executive and you want to communicate with your employees and with customers and with the world at large, it's absolutely vital that you're on Twitter. The Business School INSEAD has put out a report that says anyone who doesn't tweet is the equivalent of an executive who just sits in the corner office all day. So it's been doing its sums and it has come up with a list um, measured by some clever algorithm that shows us the top most influential CEOs in the world on Twitter. I've been studying this and it turns out that number one on the list is Tim Cook. He's got three million followers, but nevertheless beats Bill Gates, who's got 30 million. And the reason is apparently that his tweets are so engaging that everybody retweets them and likes them. So what do these brilliant tweets actually say? Well, again, I've had a little look, and he likes to tweet that he's been walking in Yosemite and, and, and shows a sort of cheesy picture of a waterfall. Everyone retweets, likes it, loves it. Then, even more bafflingly, um, he quits the bland personal stuff and does bland business by saying he's had a great meeting with the team in Dubai. Uh, again, lots and lots of likes and retweets. This is really puzzling, because who are these people who like and retweet it? But what's more puzzling still is that the point of Twitter, at least so the INSEAD people say, is that it's a very democratic way of communicating. But if you look at Cook, the number one tweeter, you discover that he follows practically no one, he never retweets, and actually these bland tweets, there have only been 40 of them so far this year, so I think he's barely trying. Um, if you go down the list, you come to my actual favourite, he's the only one who I think is worth following, and it's Elon Musk, uh, famously stroppy, and um, real great boy wonder stuff, it's all about rockets, so a lot of his tweets are about the sort of massive thrust of the rocket, with a picture of it going up into the the sky and the tweet just says woohoo. Uh, it's impossible not to like that. But equally, most people, most CEOs don't have rockets, um, so it's a little bit harder and they don't have the stroppy personality either, so it's a bit harder for them. You've got to feel sorry for poor old Jeff Immelt at GE. He recently tweeted, sent out an unbelievably boring tweet of um, GE's results. 29 retweets, pathetic. Presumably all of them were in um, GE's PR department. But there is another way of doing it, and that has been shown to us by Marissa Mayer, who has unwittingly done a little experiment. She has tweeted Yahoo's results the first time with a, a sort of boring picture of her in a television studio. The second time, a picture of her with her gorgeous baby twins. The second tweet, surprise, surprise, even though it had no news value whatsoever, was massively retweeted. So there's a lesson there. If you want to be successful on, on Twitter, just pimp your kids. Otherwise, the people in the top 20 were the sort of no normal, boring old names, the people who are famous entrepreneurs already. Um, Richard Branson, predictably, does very, very well. But if you look at his tweets, they are dismal, made much more so by the fact that they're on a repeating loop. So one of them says, smile more, you know, it will make the world a happier place. Another one, screw it, just do it. So if you missed that first time round, you'll get it again and again and again. In the end, I don't agree with the INSEAD people. I think it's perfectly possible to be massively successful in business and just not tweet at all. I mean, Jamie Dimon doesn't deign to do it and neither does Lloyd Blankfein. But if you absolutely must, a top example in this, as in so many other things, comes from Warren Buffett. He joined in 2013 and since then has deigned to put out a mere eight tweets. The most recent one was him telling us all that for the first time in 2016, the Berkshire Hathaway AGM is being live streamed. So there you are, real news and pithily delivered. I quite like it.